Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to Los Angeles, California. Welcome to the Late Late Show. I am your host, TV's Craig Ferguson. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I'd like to welcome tonight uh, a, fr a friend of mine. He's an actor, a comedian, a, a friend of the show. Please welcome the lovely Stephen Fry. I'll have to clap myself, Stephen, yeah. because we don't have any... Thank you uh, for, for doing this. I'm honoured to be a little white mouse in your laboratory experiment. Yes, right. it's, very, it's not really that much of an experiment, though, is it? I mean, people I have been Talking doing... to people in the CBS building here, they've been going around as if suddenly a new alien species has been discovered. It's the most exciting day in the history <laughs> of this broadcasting station. You really? Oh, unbelievable. It's extraordinary. People are going, will it work? Is it possible to talk to someone without people whooping in the background? I must say, I'm a little bit nervous about it. I, 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 because you, you, the idea of, of just talking to someone, it does leave you and me kind of vulnerable to Exposed. anything that comes up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and I wonder if, 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 anything, if anything... Well, let's, let's start at the... Um, Let's start at the beginning for me yeah. with you, which is I used to watch you on British television when I was working in a bar. Uh, and uh, It's a dangerous place for you to work in Yeah, it days. was, actually, yeah. Actually, I was kind of good at working behind a bar because I, uh, I kind of I made sure everyone else was drunk, which they liked, and then I didn't look so bad around. <laughs> but I used to watch it, and I always thought, all through the 80s, when I would bump into you in London when I was getting into show business and you were doing terribly well in Britain, I always held you up as someone who was, had their life completely together. It's strange, Ed, isn't it? It's like, mm. I mean, I've, this is sort of a truth about all humans, is that we, you know, like you arrive at a party... Right. ...and everybody's, in your mind, armed with a club, and all you have is a little Q-tip behind your back, and you think somehow everybody else was at a lesson at school where they learnt some life trick that you will never know because you missed that lesson and you'll never catch up. I'm fascinated and they think the same as of you. I'm yeah. fascinated to hear you say that because I, I had always assumed that you were, uh, until I read actually your, your, your autobiography, uh, you, mm. you, the, uh, I'd always assumed that you were the, the golden gifted child, you know, the Cambridge education, the studying of the classics, the mm. knowing lots of, of clever people <laughs> who were very attractive and rich. Yeah. And, and I had a terrible chip in my shoulder about that particular group of people. I had kind of grown up thinking that, that, uh, that the we intelligent... Were you were ghastly. Kind of, yeah. We're all horrible, spoiled, pampered, overpraised. And, that's, and I knew that that's how everybody thought of me. Mm. And I thought I was from a generation that was born at least 20 years too late. That maybe if I'd been born in the 50s, when wearing a tweed jacket and smoking a pipe and talking about Catullus and Ovid was somehow acceptable <laughs> and, and you were admired for it. Whereas I felt that I was born into a post-punk era in which the idea of even speaking in sentences that didn't break up at the end and go sort of and like and oh I wonder but just having an articulate voice was in itself an offence it was like rubbing people's faces in the dirt yes. and that I was hated for it yes punk and was very they did yeah. have a real anti-intellectual so streak so I genuinely didn't felt that, that simply my affect my manner everything about me would, would guarantee to make people despise me do you think that that still exists uh, <laughs> there are parts of me that think that yes yeah. and, but I know that they would find me even less acceptable if I fraud they attempted to be demotic and street and and hip. It just doesn't suit me. It's like when I wear sunglasses. No matter how bright the sun, people say, "What are you doing wearing sunglasses?" Yeah, they know you're, it's you're English. Yeah. You should accept I mean, the brightness. <laughs> but there are some British people. No one would say that to Mick Jagger. Right. You know, there are British people who are cool, hard to believe as it is, and and then there are people like me who just seem to be made of tweed. <laughs> it's just, I can't help it. I, no matter how hard I try, and even. Even if you tell people things about yourself that are that, that show your difference in England, for example, the fact that I'm a Jew, mm. the fact that I was in prison by the time I was seventeen, yeah. the fact that I was expelled from schools, that I'm gay, that yes. I that I that I was you're really the a jackpot drug act. addict. <laughs> I was a drug addict for fifteen years. Yeah. And not that I wish to boast about I was, these things. I was shocked by your drug use when I, I know, heard about it I know. because I I was uh, doing drugs and drinking at the same time. But it was very obvious uh, to everyone around me that I was doing that. You you were kind of <laughs> you know you were talking and you were writing musicals and you were um, you, you were well, very productive. And I I used to say that I took cocaine to calm me down. I was the only person I knew. Did it have that? So, well, I'm, I'm, this is another thing about me, which is very tedious and people get bored with hearing this from everybody, but I am bipolar as well. And so right. I do have manic moments when I'm extraordinarily energised. And so, if you like, the excuse, for, uh, if such a thing can be acceptable, for taking drugs was, was that it, 
if, you, if you're subject to mood changes over which you have no control, right. it's very tempting to take some drug or substance which can control your moods, because then you, you have a, 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 a semblance, or a pretense at least, of being able to control your moods. Were you, were you aware of that when you were taking no, that? No, I, mean, I think, as I say, I don't want to sound like a justification with right. what is a stupid act, <laughs> uh, and a tedious act amongst show business people. Oh, right. you only took coke, big deal, you know, I know it's, I know how dull it is to hear, you know, re reformed addicts going on about yeah, it. But well, nonetheless, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll risk that <laughs> by saying that, yeah, it is a definite... It's a, I'm sure there are lots of people watching who know that feeling of, of mood change when you wake up one morning and you feel ghastly for no reason. I mean, all of us can feel ghastly because there's a bill that's come in or our children right. have misbehaved or some awful thing has happened that, that is genuinely upsetting. But when... The sun is still shining and things are no different from the, they were the day before, but you feel you want to, you feel worthless to the nth degree. You feel absolutely like you, you still lowest get that today? piece of excrement. I, yeah, not today, fortunately. It's down well, right, but, but you still experience it. I do, yes. I get these swings. And how do you treat it now? I don't. I made a, I made a documentary, two, two hour films on this subject. I spoke to, over here to a friend of mine, the actress Carrie Fisher. Well, yes, I've spoken almost to Carrie a lot. I, I'm who sure is, you have. She's, it's very visible with, oh, her, with her. If you're, you yeah. know, who you're going to get, lady up or lady down. I mean, you see, I'm actually cyclothymic. <laughs> what does that, actually, does that mean? Is that in, a, a, sort, a sort of Cambridge <laughs> version of, of bipolar? Well, in the, in the di diagnostic and statistical manual, it is like a lower version of bipolar. It's bipolar right. one, bipolar two, and, and some people in America America call this bipolar light. <laughs> well, uh, what, why is it different from the other ones then? Well, the serious thing about bipolarity, which used to be called manic depression, of course, right. is it is a very morbid, as doctors would call it, a very morbid condition. It increases your chances of an early death by a considerable factor. From suicide? From suicide and from n neglect of one's diet, neglect of exercise, right. and of course self-medication, as it's called, i.e., you know, basically addiction and, and, and the use of all kinds of substances. When you put it like that, it makes me think that... Uh, and I'm not pushing an agenda for this at all, but I, I, it does sound like perhaps there's a lot more of a around than, oh, than one would so. initially think. Yeah, I mean, there's a danger of overdiagnosis, of course, and, and the, the, the purpose of this, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, as it's called, which defines it, is to stop people making claims in court or for compensation just because they're feeling a bit, you know, a bit hacked off. They've decided... Well, that, and that, you know, that's the other side of it. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me, particularly in Los Angeles, uh, you see a lot of this where... Um, there is a sort of uh, the pathology of the human condition that everything yeah. has a sickness and an excuse. Everyone has a, well, I did this yeah. because I did. I mean, I don't think that. I was quite interested to watch. Did you watch Tiger Woods's. Uh, I did. Uh, I apology? did. I'm afraid I cried. I, I, I mean, I I'm a real quite, sentimentalist, but yeah, I, 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 I couldn't did. help it. I, just, I was interested by it, yeah. though, because he didn't. He, he kind of said that I, I, I had... Uh, he, he talked a little bit with the Buddhist faith, which I found kind of fascinating. I was but surprised they, by that, but on the other hand, why, why, you know, sportsmen talk about faith all the time. Right, of course, yeah. used to it, I suppose. I, I mean, the, one of the odd things about that is, I don't know about you, you know this thing trolling? Uh, troll? Uh, is it something uh, like a little Norwegian thing that lives under a bridge? Right. You, uh, you answer three questions, you cross the bridge, or...? Well, that word is used to describe aggressive... Mostly unpleasant comments on web pages. Yes, of course, I know that. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Right, and it has become almost impossible, I find now, to look at something online like the Tiger Woods thing. I watched that on on right, uh, without your eye thinking. I mean, I don't want to go below the picture because people will be saying such vile things. Absolutely. I saw so that with uh, my son when Soupy Sales, who was an American comedian, yeah. uh, a groundbreaking comedian, Indeed. he died uh, a few months ago, wasn't it, when Soupy Sales yeah. died? And I, my son, who's n almost nine, wanted to see him yeah. uh, and wanted to see because he'd heard the news and uh, was he funny? So I went on the YouTube to, uh, you know, to show me, and underneath, people were saying mean things and cussing and using the F word about, about soupy sales. How can you hate soupy? Anyone called soupy, you know, I mean, the, but soupy sales, um, you know, saying mean things about them, and I think what happens is, is that people can't help but declare themselves. Yeah. And we now have an open society, which is an incredibly good thing, and I wouldn't for a minute want to take anything right, away from it. I love the world of technology enormously, and the world of social networking and all the things like Twitter that I know Right, we, we should talk about it. I actually yeah. have to take a break. I forgot that we're doing a TV show, so <laughs> we'll, let's take a break, and okay. uh, we'll be right back with Stephen Fry, everybody.